Hey, welcome to episode four. I hope everyone's doing okay, surviving this current lockdown. Just want to start this episode by basically saying thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed so far. Over the weekend, we reached uh, 100 subscribers. And for me, that's a big milestone. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And onwards to a thousand. This is a special episode. I want to do more than just document what I've been doing, my progress. I want to use my learnings to help other devs out there. The Unreal and the game development community are a great source of knowledge who provide a wealth of information for free. And I've benefited from that a lot in the past and I've used other people's support to get my games where it is now. And now it's my turn to give back. So as you can hopefully see, these past couple of weeks I've spent a lot of time tweaking the look of the game. I worked on a lot of the shaders, the post-processing, the foliage, the time of the day, the landscape. And I'm going to do a bit of a deep dive into some of these systems today, show you how I get this cell shaded Breath of the Wild looking style. And then hopefully you can use it in your projects as well. So we'll be looking at how we can control the lighting and the colors of the game via the post-process material and float curves, uh, linear color curves, instead of the more traditional methods and the pros and cons of doing it this way. I'll show you the blueprint I use to control the time of day and the seasons and how everything works together to get this final look. And if this video helped you at all today, I would love it if you could share any of your results, any of your work. I'd love to see your projects. You know, feel free to post them, or post any work you do in the comment section down below and I'll take a look. And as well, if you can, please like and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to spread this video out and hopefully we can help more people as well. So this is the time of day test level that I created, and I use this to kind of just tweak the style of the assets, the post-processing and the shaders to really kind of make sure that the style is coherent and works over any kind of time of day, any kind of season. This is just a basic stationary level. There's no gameplay in here. This kind of has an example of each type of shader. So this blueprint pretty much controls how this game looks. Um, it controls these two variables here, the, the day in the year and the time of the day, as well as controlling the colors that are set in the materials and the lights and the post process. So if I change this day in the year here, you can see that we start to scrub through the different seasons. And then this time of day slider here, if I change this, you can see we start to scrub through the day night cycle and these two obviously work together. And the way this works as well is I have these seasonal colors here. These feed into an, um, a collection. So these, um, if I change these here, you can see I kind of separate out the foliage branches um, and the grass as well. So here, this one controls the tree top, treetops. Again, like for each different season. And then these ones control the ground color. So this feeds into the grass here. So these give me kind of all the control that I need. Um, we have some other stuff here, some stuff that isn't quite fully finished yet. So I want to support weather. So for example, rain, snow, storms, um, fog, etc. Um, and the rest of it is just feeding into basically the time of the day. Uh, clouds as well. So we get some, I want to try and get some nice cloud shadows that um, roll over the landscape as well. So the two blueprints that I use are the environment manager, which controls all of that, which I just showed you. And then this time of day, which feeds into the post-processing and basically gives me the look of this game. This works pretty much on a tick. Uh, I have these functions here. These control, for example, the sun rotation. But this one is the main one we want to look at. And this basically feeds in information into um, collections using curves. So we have float curves, we have color curves. Later on down the line, we have some booleans as well. But most of these are simple curves that then feed into this um, collection here. And then this is read from, from the, the post-processing. This is the post-process material that I use. It's very simple. Um, I can't take credit for this. This was, I found this online. Um, I'll try and find out the original creator for this and then put their link 
or a link to their original post down in the comment section because it would be good if you could actually go look at their work and, and pass on that pass on thanks to them but this the way this basically works is we have this the meat and bones of it comes from this here so we all we basically do with this is grabbing the uh, lighting information from the level so if i just compile this here you can see this is just basically the the level um, in grayscale and giving me the lighting information then we have here this if statement here and we have a darkness factor here and this basically looks at every pixel in the scene compares it against its darkness factor if it's brighter than this we light it we give it a certain color or we darken it and give it a different color um, then we have this extra box over here which just basically excludes the sky box um, but then you can see here we have these variables uh, these are fed in from the material collection as I was showing you earlier and that in a nutshell is basically how I get most of my lighting so if I just compile it again put it back we have this lighting value here so as I showed you before in this blueprint here we have these uh, floats uh, sorry these, these curves again these are both float and linear color curves as I said these control the look and how these actually look so we have these here so these these nine are pretty much the ones I use I've got some of ones that control some other stuff but this is this is enough to get you going and the these first two are probably the most important along with this middle one here so this is this PP light is the one that controls the light color or something inside um, when it's basically in light. So you see here we have this, this color here and this PP dark here is what controls what the color of the dark areas are. So anywhere that isn't in light will be this color. Um, we have this light color here and this is basically just a small little tin that comes in the direction of light which kind of feeds into these two as well. It's probably not needed this one, you can get away without it. If I use this just to add a bit of extra color in. And then we have here this fog color. So this one's really good. This one provides me this, um, these really nice day and night, I'm um, sorry, these morning and evening colors that when you get the fog just rolling in, these nice pinks and stuff. Um, so this is really good, um, this one here. Uh, and then with this darkness factor here, sorry, this one's zoomed out. Um, and this one basically, this is what I showed you earlier with the if statement. So this basically goes, if a pixel is over this, then it's in daylight. If it's under this, then it's in darkness here. We have the exposure adjustment. So this allows me just to kind of ramp up the brightness or make things a little bit darker, but still allow the player to see by expo um, adjusting the exposure. This is a diffuse boost. I use this in my materials. Um, so this allows me to get some extra contrast in. So again, I can make buildings in the daytime feel a little bit darker or certain meshes and the opposite in the nighttime I can make them a bit more brighter so they're a bit easier to see. Sort of thing, the player won't really see it because it uh, changes over such a long period of time, but it really does make a difference. This here is a temperature change. Ah, sorry, this one actually controls the temperature in the game. So you can see here in the summer, I go up all the way to roughly 27, 28 degrees. This is using Celsius, obviously. And then in the winter, we go down to it's called as like minus nine. I actually had a variation in here inside the blueprint as well, so it's not just like this, it picks random deviations from this, so it'll never be this, it'll be, you know, give or take five degrees usually. And then finally, we have the PB temp. This just controls the post process temperature look. So again, in the morning and the evening, we just get a little bit warmer, return to kind of normal in the daytime. It just really complements these other curves over here. There's nothing amazing here, nothing really that kind of changes a lot. You, again, you could, without, you really only need um, these two here, this middle one, and then if you want the fog, get this one as well. The rest are kind of just all complementary, they kind of feed into other systems to really kind of help you sell this effect. When you're building these post process materials as well, um, one thing you want to really check is this um, post process material section here, the blendable location. You just want to make sure that this 
um, is before translucency, um, not after the turn mapping. Um, so if you get some weird effects, this might be one of the reasons why. So I would just double check that. So before I go, I'd like to just show you two extra updates. So since uh, I did my last dev diary, we now have um, a website. So this is the website for Mickey Games. It's still in progress. So some parts are going to be missing um, some parts, but you can get on there. You can read about myself if you want to. Uh, you can contact me. And again, you know, if you do anything with anything that I've helped you with, I would love to just chat, just see what you've done. You know, it's, it's really good if we can chat and share the knowledge. So this is just mikigames.com. You know, feel free to take a look on there. You've got pictures and stuff of, of all my work. As I said, the site's <laughs> in uh, production, in process, so the <laughs> ignore this. And then also, I am now on Steam. I'm still not sold on this name. I'm trying to find a new name, but for now, the game is still called Peasants. And on there as well, you can see some screenshots. I can read a little bit about the game. This is all sus you know, sus suspect to change. And you can also add, you to, add this to my wish list. And again, if you could do that, I would, I would really appreciate that because that really helps helps me in the future as well. And if there's anything that you'd like to see in the game, please just give me a show and I'll try and get it in there as well. This is a passion project, but I want to do this with you know, the help of the community as well. So yeah, this has been episode four. Where I really appreciate you watching this one. If you have anything that you want me to go over in the future episodes or if you have any questions about anything in this episode give me a give me a shout and until next episode thank you again and cheers <laughs>